Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Roger Blumenthal uh, here with Dr. Seth Martin. We're both uh, co-editors of the Dyslipidemia Community on uh, Cardiosaurus. And uh, Seth, uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, it, it's been a very fascinating meeting. We've had some nice uh, presentations that uh, talk about the future, uh, but the future is still a long ways away for the uh, outcome trials. Maybe you could uh, tell the audience a little bit, about, a little Seth, about um, PCSK9 modulators, what they are, and uh, some of your initial thoughts. Absolutely, yeah. This, so we're years away, but the stage is set uh, from these phase three trials that have been presented here. So. PCSK9 inhibitors, it's really a sexy class of lipid modulating medications. And basically, it works in a way similar uh, to statins on the LDL receptor. The uh, PCSK9 is a proprotein that degrades LDL, LDL receptor. So by inhibiting this, we basically allow a greater availability of the LDL receptor. And so what we're seeing from this, we've basically seen five phase three studies presented here at ACC14, and they're very... Uh, rem they're remarkably consistent um, and robust in terms of showing a, a, that we're cutting LDL cholesterol in half or more. Um, and this has been shown across a, a diverse set of populations and, and the durability of the effect out to 52 weeks in, in the Descartes study. And these were all done with um, Amgen's uh, Evolucimab. So in one, of the, the, in one of the studies, they compared it to azetamide, which is uh, has tended to be our go-to uh, agent when people are completely uh, st uh, statin intolerant. Um, and in some of the other data they presented on top of high dose of torvastatin and rosuvastatin. Um, tell us, uh, in one of the studies, um, I guess about 50% of the individuals had uh, been intolerant of at least two statins. Maybe for our audience, we should uh, clarify what we mean by statin intolerance, and clinically, yeah. what would you do, Seth, to yeah. see if a patient's really statin intolerant? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. GALS2 was presented at the Late Breakers this morning showing uh, statin intolerant patients were able uh, to really tolerate PCSK9 inhibition well, and so they had defined it uh, based on at least intolerance to two statins, and they, and at some of the centers had, had even uh, three. more three or, or more statins that had been tried and, and uh, basically this was, you know, it takes clinical judgment, but this is assessing patients closely after starting uh, statins for symptoms that they're reporting often myalgias um, that uh, leads to the discontinuation of statins and the symptoms uh, often go away with the discontinuation of statins. So in this um, population that can be tough uh, and certainly an unmet clinical need right now when we after we've really uh, tried multiple statins and can't, as the guidelines would recommend, tried multiple statins and prioritized statins to, and can't seem to get the patient to tolerate it, this, this really could be a nice, nice option and seems to be well tolerated so far in the trials. So we, we, a lot of times we think about the statin intolerant patient as being v uh, very um, prone to side effects. And what was uh, very nice in the GALS2 is I believe they only had 8% of the individuals had muscle symptoms. So uh, that's um, you know, a, a very uh, a major step forward. Um, w uh, put on your guideline hat, put on your FDA hat. Uh, what do you think potentially could be the first indication for a PCSK9 inhibitor, assuming that we uh, continue to see very good safety three years out? Do you think uh, that in the statin intolerant group or people who have familial hypercholesterolemia, would they be uh, mm -hmm. uh, groups that potentially could get some limited indications for use? I think, I think that's right. I, it seems to me that, uh, and uh, I mean, uh, much more senior people could talk better to this point, but I, it really seems like the slam dunks would be those statin intolerant patients as well as the heterozygous FH population that's being tested in the, the trials that would be the highest priorities for the, this class of medications. I think the, the, um, the grayer um, uh, areas will be patients that uh, don't necessarily meet those conditions but have severe hyperlipidemias and are already tolerating good doses of statins. And I think if we get the outcomes data in these phase four trials, and I'm very hopeful, I, I, I'd be shocked 
if we don't see that because the biology is so intact, the, the epidemiology and now the trials are looking so good. But so I'm very, very hopeful that um, e even in broader populations, this could still be a, a useful class of medications for, for those uh, patients um, who still aren't quite where they need to be. So we should remind our audience that these are um, uh, subcutaneous injections. If you took this monoclonal antibody uh, orally, it would get broken down in the GI tract. Yeah. Um, but we have so many patients that are diabetics that give themselves uh, in injections. Yeah. Um, so I think that's uh, you know, very important. What um, is your feeling uh, about what uh, needs to be done in terms of anisotropid, the CETP inhibitor, um, since we've had two of the CTP inhibitors not work out well. Um, how do you think uh, regulatory agencies will, will look at that? Yeah, there, there, I think the outcomes studies are just as and probably actually much more important given the complexities of, of the biology there and the outcome studies we've, we've had um, so far. But certainly there's differences, it seems, between uh, anisotropib and the other CTP. Uh, P inhibitors. So, so I, I think in the next uh, years to come, it's going to just be exciting. We've had a lot of failures in in the lipid trials in, in the last uh, several years. So I think um, it's nice for us all to have uh, th these trials where we have a, a lot of hope and um, and uh, we'll see what we find. But uh, I think these will, could be a very warmly welcomed therapeutic option. And that, that'll be great. It'll give Dr. Stone and his panel some other things to consider once we get some more clinical trial data. So this is uh, Dr. Roger Blumenthal and Dr. Seth Martin, the uh, editors of the Dyslipidemia Community and Cardiosource. Thank you very much for joining us today.